Hey, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to work through some more logos. Uh, I want to do the, today's logo for a web banner, but I want to show you some logos that I've already done that some of them are more circle in nature that you might want to use for, yes, they could be used for logos, they could be used for uh, buttons on web pages, they could be used in PowerPoints. And so let me just cruise through some of these and show you what you can do. And we use GIMP to do these. GIMP is free open source software. It works a much like Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop and you can download it for free from GIMP.org so let me click through some of these that we've done and so that's the first one I did for my one for one of them for my Techie Warrior website and that's the one my my students did for intense bike and trail they needed some buttons and that's the same style but different uh, color different uh, positions that's another one done in a stencil font and for another class uh, we were doing buttons for their web pages and a little bit of um, alien glow on these around the letters I want to show you how to do that today as well this is a web banner and we're probably going to create something very similar to this today using GIMP and just to show you the depth that you can get with GIMP with the different layers and and uh, getting some depth to your buttons and your web banners there's some more in different colors so I like to show you the kind of the range there's just no end to what you can come up with with logo design so let me um, click out of this one and um, show you GIMP and let's get started so here's GIMP this is uh, normally I have it up in the three panels I have the toolbox on the left I have the canvas area in the middle and I have the layers area over on the right and it does kind of come up separately like this so that's a little bit different now let me uh, design this from scratch so we're going to get a file new and my image size my width is going to be 800 in pixels and my height is 150 and I'm going to also go down to advanced options and I'm going to make sure that it says fill with now, normally it says background color but I want you to change that to transparency it'll make it much easier to work with once it's done so it takes on the background color of your PowerPoint or your web page or whatever you're using I'll say okay now there's the canvas. No, it is checkerboard. That just indicates that it's a transparent background. And let me just resize that window so I can see all the edges here. So let me go in and I'm first going to select the rectangular or rectangle select tool in the toolbox. And I'm going to take my mouse and draw this from edge to edge of the canvas. Let go. Then I'm going to go to select and I'm going to shrink it down. So select shrink by 10 pixels. Say OK just to get it away from the edges of the canvas and next I'm going to use the gradient tool the gradient tool is on your toolbox it calls it's called the blend tool and I'm gonna start off with black and white so let me change the background here to black so white and black white's the foreground blacks the background and blend mode is normal opacity is a hundred um, the light to dark is what you want on this part and if you click on it you want it foreground to background which I think is the default anyway and the offset zero the shape on this one's linear if you're using the circle one I would use um, radial instead and that's just kind of for your um, highlighting so let me draw this once it's set now for the inside rectangle I'm going to go from top corner to bottom corner diagonally and see how that blends in there and then I'm going to select and shrink by 10 pixels again and do the same thing except that I'm start, starting from the opposite corner back up to the top corner and that creates some depth for us for our banner now the next one is select shrink again again by 10 pixels this time we're going to add the color that we want so match it up to whatever colors you've got going on in your PowerPoint or your web pages or whatever the case may be company colors such as that so the colors I'm going to change the background color to the color I'm going to use today is kind of a magenta color I guess so say okay again light to dark um, and I will change go from up here to this new rectangle down to the bottom corner there we go basically you're looking for light dark light you want the opposite things so this is dark light dark over here and that contrast makes for that depth that you're trying to go for there so now the next thing is I want to put some text in so that's my text tool the big A in the toolbox and when you click on it then you can pick your font how do you pick your font well you're gonna click on the big a little a symbol and pick your font I'm gonna go with Joker man today it's a very decorative font it's a fun font 
and the size I know is 55 it works for this particular one I will make sh you should make sure it's in points PT and not pixels sometimes it's in pixels but make sure you're in point for fonts and the color what color do I want well I think I want black so I'm gonna click on that and click black too okay you can pick your colors from any of this part of the screen or any part of the screen and then you know get down to the exact shade you're looking for GIMP is good about that so I say okay now I haven't drawn my text box yet but this is a key step to make sure none of your letters gets cut off because if I don't do this one just right then the Y in my words uh, gets cut off so I have to make sure my text box is large enough so I'm gonna start at the very edge of the canvas that's a very important point and actually I'm gonna take it a little bit below my uh, canvas just to make sure my Y doesn't get cut off and go to the edge so I'm a little bit bigger than my initial canvas. Now the GIMP text editor box pops up here, and I'm just going to um, move it down one spacebar over a little bit, just so my text is not hugging the edge, because when I go to put my glow on, I want plenty of room for the glow. To, I don't want the glow to get cut off at all. So I'm doing, for one of my students, uh, one of my student groups, uh, mycinema.com theme, and that what they want to have on their web page banner and so we got it there you see it show up here and I can close that out now I know it's not in the right place and that's okay at this point so just close the next thing we're gonna do is put a little um, background on it so um, we're gonna actually put the alien glow on it which adds the background so go to filters alpha to logo and we pick the kind of glow we want there's lots of choices but I'm gonna stick with alien glow you pick the uh, now the glow size the standard is 150 that seems to work for most of my applications and the glow color I'm gonna go with white but you can pick again any color you want for your glow and now the next step really dramatically changes things so don't be alarmed just say okay and it puts the glow around the letters which is what you do want now what you don't want is the black background but there's an easy way to get rid of that you're gonna go up in your layers it added a new layer called background number one it is black so you want to click on that and just send that layer to the trash can that you see down there so click that and all is better okay now my is still in the wrong place so I want to show you how to move that the correct way now let's clarify that the text is one layer up here on your layers and your alien glow is a separate layer if you were to move one the other one would not follow so you need to merge just these two items right now to make them be one unit so that when you go to move it they move together so the easy way is just to click on that top text layer and if you're not sure what you're clicking on you can always do the eyeball open and shut to see what disappears and you know that then that that's the text and the next eyeball obviously is the alien glow that I just turned off so I'm gonna turn it back on okay now to merge these top two just right click on the top one and when you right click you'll get a menu and you can select merge down and that merges just those top two layers so now the glow and the text stay together when you get to move them so let's go over to the move tool and that you'll find in your toolbox over here and I'll, I also make sure that move the active layer is buttoned in so GIMP is uh, not confused by which layer I'm trying to move and I always make sure that that's highlighted as well now I can just grab it and move it over where I want it to be and I like the fact that I can have the Y kind of hanging out over the uh, edge of the panel and I'm going to scoot this over because I am going to bring another um, piece of clip art into this to complete it okay so there's that part now I, um, I want to go get my clip art that's in another GIMP so I'm going to say file open it will open a separate GIMP window and navigate back to where I have this little bit of clip art stored that I just took off of the internet off the images so um, it looks like that and I've already made sure it's transparent background on it and I'll have it brought up in a separate GIMP window and you may say well I opened it but where'd it go well it's probably hiding behind your main window which it is here it is and it's just a small little graphic that looks kind of cool now how do I select it and how do I get it back over to my main GIMP file here so the easy way is to do control A on your keyboard that selects this image and control C on your keyboard will copy that image to the clipboard then bring this back over and just go to edit paste as 
this is very important you get the right one here you want to pick new layer because it's just an additional layer you want to add in there it is now it's probably too big and you have to resize it and no, that's no problem to resize a little different on this but you use the scale tool the scale tool pops up over here in the toolbox click on it you really don't have to mess with any of these you leave these on the defaults they're fine but uh, when I click once at the bottom corner a little box comes up I want to just make sure the chain is joined so that's unjoined which would possibly keep make it out of proportion and I don't want it to get out of proportion so I'm going to chain it up and make sure it stays in proportion as I as I resize it so going down to the bottom corner of that image and I'm going to resize it a little bit it's a little big and I if I get it too small I can bring it back and then hit scale and then you can kind of see I can move it hit the move tool and bring it over closer I kind of like the fact that this is kind of hanging out um, side the, the boundaries as well uh, it may still be a little big so let me scale it back again and it's a tiny bit smaller scale and maybe move again and bring it around and something like that okay now you're not quite done if you like what you see then it's time to merge visible layers so I'm going to go to image at the top menu item and go down to merge visible layers and that just takes all these layers over here that you see in your layers panel and merges them together to make one complete image so select merge and there you go now it's just one complete image and you also want to save it so go to file save now the file format that you save it in is very important so I may say my cinema web banner but the main thing is uh, and I probably need to make this I've got several versions of this in different colors so I'll just say to magenta just to keep my color straight now whatever you call it dot and this is the important part dot PNG keep it a, a PNG format that accepts because it does well with transparencies and the quality of the image is good too so I'll hit save in the folder that I want to save it in and it will ask me this and you just say export is fine and then you say save as PNG and you just say save at the bottom and it's saving it and then you can see the complete one now if I was to use show you this like in the um, PowerPoint for instance that's uh, not the same one let me bring that one in that we just did because it's a little bit better and let me find it um, yeah that's it right there so I'll insert picture into the PowerPoint but like I said I can put it in a web page as well okay and obviously you can resize these so if you need to make it fill the slide you can just by resizing it if it's too big and you want to make it a little smaller that's fine too and just drag it wherever you need it to be so it uh, works and moves well let me move it down a little bit there we go and uh, there's your completed web banner or even a title bar for a PowerPoint check out all our videos at techiewarrior.com and thank you for your time